guys, I'm Emil, and today I'm going to show you how to do this. So a little while ago, I made a video teaching you guys how to do a simple 2.5D animation. And I said, if you guys wanted to see it, I would make a more advanced version. Welp, finally, I'm back to show you how to make one. In this video, we're going to use Photoshop and After Effects, and that's all you really need. Just to warn you, I did use one paid for plugin. Well, I'm out guys. You don't really need that to get this effect. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So here we are back again in Photoshop. So I've already dragged in this spooky looking corridor and now it's time to set the scene. I'm gonna drag in this lovely photo of a guy standing on a mountain. What a great view. It's not gonna be so great soon. A good way to see how it fits into the photo without even cutting it out is by going into the blending modes and looking through them all until there's one where it kind of removes the background and it, it looks quite good actually. So I'm gonna cut him out. It's gonna be a long-winded process, but don't worry, I'm gonna skip right through it. Okay, so we've cut him out. It took a little bit of time, but it's what you have to do. Now we need to integrate him with the background a little bit more. So I'll change the lighting, I'll add a shadow. Let's get this done. Okay, so I think I got the lighting down. I desaturated them, turned the exposure way down, added a shadow, and now to properly integrate them into the scene, I'm gonna add the highlights. Okay, we've added the highlights and it's looking great. Now time to get to the actual part of the video that you're here for. Finally! Which is creating the parallax. So unlike the last video where I cut out different segments of the photo and then put them in 2.5D space and After Effects manually, there is something in Photoshop called vanishing point. So what you wanna do is click on your background layer and go to vanishing point. It would be good if I knew where Vanishing Point is. Okay, I found it. It's in Filter, Vanishing Point, or Alt Control V, which is what I always use. It's gonna bring up this window. You can see there's some, there's some tools here. The zoom tool, zoom out a little bit just so you can click around the edges. And then there's the Create a Plane tool. So what you do is you separate all of these different planes. So I wanna create one for the floor. So I'll click right in the corner up here and then another one in the corner on the other side. Then drag it all the way down here so it follows the line. Click off, off the edge and then you see it's gonna create an actual plane. Line it up with the other edge. Click here and there you go, it's created a plane. And then an easy way to get all of the other planes depending on which photo you're using, is by hovering your mouse over this little anchor point here, holding down Alt and then dragging upwards. And you're not working. Hello? You got, you got, you, oh my God. And then it's red. Why are you being? Sometimes it doesn't work and it goes red and I have absolutely no idea. But if you just drag it around a little bit, it'll eventually work out what the hell it's doing. And there you go. Then a quick and easy way to create the rest of the planes is by make sure you have the create plane tool selected, click on the actual plane, and then in the middle anchor point, you can hold alt and drag across. And then again, hold. For some reason it keeps deselecting the create plane tool, but then you hold alt, drag upwards, creates one for this side, and again, Hold Alt, make sure that's selected, and then drag across, close enough. And then again, for the back one, hold Alt, and drag up, and that's created the back plane. This one doesn't quite reach the edge, so you can drag it forwards like this. This one doesn't need to be that far. You can actually change the angle of them as well by going up here and moving them around like this. make it 
fit better. Okay, and once you're happy with that, you go up to this little icon and you click on frickin' It was at this point I realized how unreliable Vanishing Point is. For some reason, it just wouldn't work. I kept dragging it and it would go the wrong way. The export for After Effects button was grayed out, but after about seven years and thousands of attempts, I finally made it work. And I can't even tell you how I made it work, I just kept trying. So I wish I could help you if you have the same problems that I had, but I'm sorry to say I might not be able to help. If someone does know why this was happening, please let me know in the comments down Below. For all my pain and suffering, please consider subscribing to the channel. It would mean so much to us and we're trying to hit that thousand subscriber goal. So please click that red button down below. And while you're at it, like the video too. Back to the video. So what you guys don't know is that probably for the last half an hour, I've been trying to get this export for After Effects button to show up. For some reason, it's just been grayed out almost every time I've tried to click it. I just kept on doing the same process again and again. And then eventually, for some reason, I have no idea why it eventually showed up. So, <laughs> I'm sorry if you have to go through that, but they need to create a better way of doing this. I'm not sure, it's probably me just doing it wrong. So after you've done your planes, you click on this icon up here, click on export for After Effects, and then you can save it, and then it freezes. <laughs> oh my God, come on, save. Save, 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 please, just save. Okay, everything is done. It did it. Okay, it's saved. Oh, I'm starting to regret this. <laughs> Next step is to save your assets into PNGs. Right click and export as PNG. And then do the same thing for the shadow as well. Now we're in After Effects, so you can't just simply import your project. Instead, you have to go up to File, Import, and there's actually a specific option for Vanishing Point. Click on that, find your Vanishing Point, select that, click on it, and it's going to automatically create a composition. And of course, because Vanishing Point is really annoying, it's going to be rotated. So here it's created a null. Now, I don't know why, but it's always not zeroed out. So zero that out. And hopefully yours becomes straight too. It's also created a camera. And this is where the magic happens. It's too slow to show. Change it to quarter and look. It's actually made it a 2.5D automatically. Incredible. No way. If you go to your custom view, you can actually see what it's done. Formed it into a cube. Whee. Okay, enough of that. I'm gonna drag in the other assets. So the dude, the shadow, gonna bring him in, make him 3D. So click on this button, drag him into place, and bring him closer. Obviously, he's a little bit too small, so I'll scale him up. And make sure his feet are just touching the ground plane, like that. I just realized it's probably easier to create a shadow in After Effects rather than Photoshop, because that way you can get the perspective right. So I'm gonna duplicate him and make shadow out of his body. Look at that, how sweet does that look? So that's that's pretty much the effect. Um, now all the final touches are the camera movement, any ambient effects you wanna add. And yeah, I'm just gonna go through all of that now. Hopefully the main part of this tutorial has been helpful. But yeah, I'll see you at the end of the video once the whole thing is complete. So this is where I'm at with this piece. It's looking pretty good, I'm pretty happy with it. So I got the camera, it's it's swooping in, it's approaching him. It's a bit eerie, it's a bit scary. And then, it, I don't know if you saw, but something is behind him. <gasps> Ooh, I'm so scared. Yeah, yeah, that, that's it. I did quite a few cool effects. So the first thing I actually did was 
I pre-comped all of the original layers because I realized I didn't change the composition size because it's pretty big. I don't think I need it to be that big and I didn't want to slow down the computer that much. So I pre-comped it and changed it to a four by five ratio, 1080 by 1350. Perfect for Instagram. So yeah, there are my camera settings. The camera creeps towards him on the Z axis and it tilts downwards here on the X rotation on the actual camera. And it starts to creep up behind him. And you see this monster slash killer behind him. I duplicated him, put a bit of a blur, a fill, and I literally just animated the position from left to right. Sometimes these things are very simple, but effective. On the main composition, I added a red glow. So all I did was create a solid red. I went through all these to see which one would work best. Classic color dodge gave this really cool look. I masked it out with a, a circle mask and I feathered it by a lot. I also added an adjustment layer, basically added a grain filter. This is great for the horror look. And I also added just like 1% of noise. That always helps if there's any banding in the video. And on top of that, a vignette. Oh, and the big thing, which I haven't mentioned yet, is the Shine. This is a paid for plugin. It's Trap Code by Trap Code. It's called Shine and it's freaking awesome. But yeah, without it, it's not that interesting. With it, gives you that volumetric lighting and there's, there's loads of settings you can play it with, including fractal noise kind of creates more of a dusty effect. I also added these masks and animated them because without them, there's just too much glow. So I added them and subtracted them. So it wouldn't affect these highlights up here and down here. And that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. If you found the tutorial helpful, please leave a comment down below and don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. We will see you next time. Working on my YouTube voice, how was that?